Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and today we are going to make that sign out of metal. Put it on this building. Check it out. So today we're taking on a project of building a sign for my friend Chelsea's restaurant called Flourish. Now, you may have seen some of the other projects I did for this build. I made some hanging skylight planters and bread rack and a couple other things. Now, the logo for her store is actually a handwritten uh, of the word flourish. And the way I'm going to mount it is with some aluminum standoffs. Now, the first thing I did was create a test, which you can see in the corner, of making sure the standoffs would fit through a hole. And then after taking the file and digitizing what she sent me, I made a tool path to cut it on my Torchmate plasma table. Now the process of making this sign is somewhat simple uh, with or without a plasma table. Now if this was a more regimented shape that you could cut by hand, you could easily do the same mounting process. Um, but the plasma table obviously does give you a more precise look and makes it actually true to whatever you get you know, on the drawings. So the way that I'm doing this because my table is four foot by four foot is I broke the design into two sections and then I cut each page, each piece individually. Now this is 16 gauge mild steel, and what I'm doing here is piercing the holes for the standoffs and then going ahead and cutting the border. It's really cool to watch the machine be able to cut those sweeping curves, and it does a really nice job with precision cut consumables, which are made for cutting thinner material. Now this is all gonna get painted, so I'm gonna have to clean everything off when I'm done regardless, but it's doing a nice job of making that cut, and in the end I wind up with a good amount of scrap because of the way it laid out, but less welding. Now, if I wanted to save material, I could have cut the letters more individually and welded them all together, but I'm in a little bit of a crunch for time. So after cutting them out, I busted out my MP140 welder, and this is going to handle that thin material really well. Now, I did make a small mistake on the first cut, and I realized that the piece I put on the machine was not actually 48 by 48, and I didn't measure it. Make sure you measure before you start your cut. So I do have two welds as opposed to just one but I'm gonna make quick work of that by just beveling everything, grinding everything, preparing it, and then welding it on the table. I'm holding it down flat to the tabletop with these clamps, and it's just gonna allow me to kind of tack it in place. And then I decided I would use a piece of angle here which would hold both sides at the same time and allow me room to get a welder in there. Now with sheet metal like this, I wanna make sure that I don't warp it. So I'm being gentle to kind of apply heat and apply little beads as I kind of run around. I'm not trying to put too much heat in the material at once, which is gonna allow me to keep it from warping. And then I grind after I weld, kind of move back and forth and make sure I don't have any little pit holes because I would prefer not to use Bondo on this if I can avoid it. This is gonna get primed and then painted, but if I can avoid any sort of Bondo because this may eventually get powder coated, I don't wanna have that there um, it'll just kind of make the whole process a little bit better. So I spend the time and I make sure that I weld it from both sides, making sure that there are no little pinholes and everything is fully blended out so that this piece looks as though it was cut out of one piece of material. I also have to go through while I have it on the back side and chip off any dross, which is the kind of leftover slag when you plasma cut that may be left over from that cut. There's very little on there, but I do want to make sure I get off anything that may remain. And then I go ahead and grind out whatever's left on the back side and front side before I take a orbital sander and sand it to show the fully blended surface. Now with all that done, the piece looks continuous like it was cut out of one sheet and I can take it outside and do my little bit of prep work before I start the painting process. Now I'm grinding this just on the edges to make sure there aren't any burrs, which is a pretty quick process. I just run through it and do that a little bit with a uh, Victo grain disc and then I go ahead and clean up any of the edges with a little flap wheel on a die grinder. Prep is really important when you're going to paint something like this especially if it's going to be handled I don't want there to be any sharp burrs and then I go ahead and take one of these surface conditioning discs and I scuff up the surface on both sides so that the paint will have a little more tooth and can grab on. I also go ahead with this flap disc and add even more sort of grab surface for the primer um, because that Scotch-Brite wheel wasn't really digging in that deep. Now I'm going to be using these aluminum standoffs that I got from Amazon for this and they are just raw aluminum but will also need to be primed and painted. 
They're pretty simple and I really like using these. I've used them on a few projects before. You basically put a pointed screw through the standoff and then the head of the standoff acts as another screw which will hold whatever you're using. They're really versatile. They come in a bunch of different depths. These are one inch and they're really great to use. They can be powder coated because they're metal and they hold up. So now starting on the back side, I am priming this with a roll-on clean metal primer, an oil-based primer from Rust-Oleum. This is one of my favorite primers to use. It's got some gap filling properties and it does a really good job. Now an important tool for the installation of this is going to be a template. I thought about a couple different ways to install this and since it's a little bit flimsy being 16 gauge, I thought a full size template would be best. To do that, I put some graph paper on this sheet and then I laid out the sign and traced it with a Sharpie. Now I made sure to level the sign in reference to the graph paper itself so I could use the lines on the graph paper when I'm up on the side of the building to know that I'm in the right spot. I go through and I trace the whole sign and then I trace all the standoff locations and then afterwards I go with a transfer punch and I actually poke those holes. Before I did that, I did put a coat of the pink paint on these standoffs while I was sort of doing things. I was trying to paint things so they could dry while I was doing other tasks. And then you can see me here off to the side using a transfer punch to punch a central hole through the actual template itself where all those screws are gonna go. I then take this template and roll it up, put it off to the side. And then just to protect this piece of pink foam, I just put some more of this graph paper down so that I can use it as a painting surface. I used the pink foam to cut plywood, so I didn't want to get any paint on it because it could eventually bleed onto some plywood. But this is actually a great way to paint a lightweight sign like this. I put some decking screws through the standoff hole so it could hang vertically. And then I used this custom colored spray paint that my friend Chelsea got to paint both sides of the sign. Now, what's nice about using this foam as sort of a hanger is that if you've ever, you know, if you've ever used spray paint, spray paint cans don't like spraying down. They like spraying straight out. Um, so if you can spray straight ahead of you, you just get a better result, a more even distribution of the paint. And this worked out really well. It allowed me to coat the sign really, really well, and it made drying it outside super easy. Now, one of the important areas on this is the bottom of the sign because that's what you're gonna see. So I made sure to coat that really well and I gave this four coats, plenty of time to dry. And then after a couple days, it was ready to install. Now, this is the facade of the building. The sign is gonna be about 13 feet off of the ground. And I had laid this out in Google SketchUp to know exactly where it was gonna be. But obviously, Mac and I had to go up there, measure everything out and lay it out perfectly. This is another really nice thing about having a full-size paper template. Aside from it blowing around in the breeze, it was really easy to reposition it. And then, like I said, I can use a level to reference off of the graph paper lines itself, tape this thing to the building, and then we can go ahead and transfer all the, all the holes from the standoffs through the stucco. Now to do that, I just used uh, a couple of standoffs to hold the actual paper template in place, just in case my tape failed. And then we actually used some Jimmy DeResta ice picks to poke through the exact holes and sort of countersink through the stucco on the front of the building so that our screws would have a nice reference to go into to hold the standoffs on. Now, once that's done, I took out the two standoffs that I put in, pulled down the paper template, and then I could start to install them, you know, kind of in their final locations. Now, before I install any of the standoffs, I am putting a dab of Lexel sealant between the back of the standoff and the stucco facade. Now, the stucco is on three quarter inch foam, so I have to be very careful not to put these standoffs in too tight, because if I do, I'll crush in the foam, which would potentially ruin the waterproof aspects of the facade of this building. There's a lot of standoffs on this. There's 26 in total, and I wanted to make sure that the sign was really well supported. God forbid it ever were to fall off or any of the standoffs to fail. There are plenty on there, and it'll keep her from wiggling around. It was a bit of a reach to get some of them in place, but after a little while, we got them all in, and then the next task was just to make sure they were all in the right spot. We had to do a little bit of flexing here to kind of like move the metal around and make sure that the standoffs went in place. And the other aspect of these standoffs is there's a plastic washer on the back side of the sign and also in between the head of the screw and the sign itself. You can see I had some tape in one area. That's because we hit a piece of steel and had to actually glue a standoff in. But otherwise, the sign turned out great. The installation was a breeze and I'm super happy with how it came out. It looks like it was just placed on the building with a giant pen, which was exactly the goal. Looks really elegant and beautiful. 
All right, that about does it for this video. Shout out to Macklin and Tom for coming and helping. It was a very bad day to do this. It was as sunny as it could be, nice and hot, but it went up perfect. The template that I made worked out great. Uh, we put Lexel like sealant behind all the things. There's Chelsea, this is her restaurant. You should go check it out. It came out awesome though. I'm super happy with it. It looks really nice up there and I think it's gonna last a long time. We didn't have time to powder coat it, but in the future we could always just take it down, send all the parts out to get powder coated because everything's metal and uh, have it back in just a couple days. So that might happen in the future, but for now it looks great. Check out the Torchmate, great CNC plasma table, made the project possible and Lincoln Electric for always supplying me with great equipment. So thanks for watching. Check me out on Instagram right here. Check out Chelsea's Instagram for Flourish Bake Shop and All Day Cafe right here. Check out Macklin's Instagram for More Than Carpentry right here. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. See you on the next video.